Mom and daughter were driving home, but suddenly the car started to stop, and the news about the beginning of the war was broadcast on the radio. Mom quickly turned off this channel and turned on the music. She tried to change the subject, but gunshots and loud screams of people were heard on the street. The daughter ran out into the street in a panic, but her mother grabbed her and covered them with a blanket. She asked her daughter to sit quietly and said everything would be fine. But a minute later, a military man broke the window and separated the daughter from her mother. A few years later, Vanya's mom Ed becomes a soldier in the army and goes to a refugee camp. On the way, her train was stopped and ordered to get off. She hesitated at first and did not want to go out, but it turned out that her task was changed. She was assigned a new task. On the way, Ed met a lieutenant named Nyland. He believed her documents, and they recovered to the military base. Ed used to live in this city and immediately realized that they were going the wrong way. She told Nyland about it. The lieutenant said he had to go somewhere. He got out of the car and told Ed there was nowhere to go. Ed disobeyed and left. She was attacked by people trying to take the car and escape from the camp. Ed was armed and was able to deal with them. Without waiting for the lieutenant, she quickly got into the car and drove away. Ed arrived at the base. In order to be let in, she showed documents. The officer asked her where her escort was. She lied and said she came alone. She was let in and sent to a waiting room with other soldiers. The girl captain came into the room and said that the colonel was ready to receive them. The soldiers left their personal belongings and weapons and went to the colonel. There should have been five soldiers in total, but one could not get there. The captain told the soldiers that the enemy had recently bombed many military bases. The base where they were now was further away from the others, and the road to it would take at least two days. If the enemy destroys this base, then all people will be cut off from the coast and ports, which means losing the war. But there is still a chance to fix everything, the last opportunity to change the alignment and even end the war. The colonel explained to the soldiers that the archipelago was covered with ice for the first time in 36 years. The ice is too thin for equipment and too thin for the passage of the ship, but it will be able to withstand a soldier on skates. The colonel announced that now four soldiers are participating in Operation Black Crab. Their task was to deliver several capsules on the ice to the scientific station. Ed could not decide on such a risky operation, but the colonel convinced her that Ed's daughter was at the base to which the soldiers needed to deliver the capsules, and Ed agreed. Before the start of the operation, the whole team shared what they would do after it was over. Someone wanted to find a brother, and someone wanted to get married. The captain came into the room and handed over pills, bulletproof vests, skates, and much more. She informed them that they were going on the road tomorrow evening. At night, the base began to be bombed, and that's why the team went on the road ahead of schedule. During the transfer of the capsules, Lieutenant Nyland joined the team. The captain warned that in two miles there would be enemy territory and that it was necessary to move only at night and wished the detachment smooth ice, and they left. After some time, the team stopped to rest. Forsberg fell through the ice. Ed immediately jumped after her and took the capsules. It was not possible to save Forsberg. The team stopped for a break at a house near the shore. They lit a fire so that Ed could warm up since she practically could not walk by herself. Nyland and Ed had tense relationships since Ed could no longer be a commander. The post should be taken by Nyland. Ed didn't agree with this and didn't trust him. Kareen tried to contact his girlfriend Annette, who assumed that Kareen was a traitor because after he talked on the radio, an enemy helicopter flew in. The team decided not to kill Kareem and take him with them but leave him without weapons. At the next halt, Kareem heard the sound of a helicopter approaching and informed the others about it. The soldiers were barely able to hide from the helicopter and stay alive. Nyland said that it was very dangerous to drive on the ice and they would go through the island. Ed noticed footprints in the snow and then a light in one of the houses. They broke into it and found that an elderly couple lived there. The whole team decided to spend the night here. During dinner, Ed's fork fell and she looked under the table. Grandpa had a gun in his hands. 
Grandpa noticed from Ed's reaction that she knew everything and started shooting. The soldiers reacted quickly and killed the grandfather and grandmother, but unfortunately, the bullet hit Kareem and he died, and Malik was wounded. Before leaving the house, Kareem's girlfriend contacted them on the radio and asked him to answer the phone, but he could not answer because he was dead. The team realized that Kareem was not a traitor at all and went to the ice to continue their journey. After some time, Malik could no longer drive because of his injury. That's why the team found shelter. The soldiers decided to leave Malik in the shelter, leave him food and water, and upon arrival at the base, send him help. Granvik disagreed with this decision and opened one of the capsules. It turned out that this capsule contained components of a virus that could kill not only enemies, but also all of humanity. After some time, Malik shot himself, and Ed decided not to stay in hiding and drive on. But the unexpected happened. The ice in the sea was too thin and could not support the weight of Ed. By this time, Granovic and the lieutenant arrived in time. They helped her get out and decided to go further on the thin ice of the sea. During their crossing on the ice, they were fired upon, but with their combined efforts, they killed the enemy. They decided to stay overnight at this point. Granvik understood that they were carrying lethal weapons and did not want to do it, but Ed did not want to listen to it. Then the soldiers asked her why she so wanted to get to that base and complete the task, but Ed did not answer. Ed woke up and found that Nyland had left with the capsules alone. Ed and Granvik were attacked by enemies. They shot to the last. The enemies threw a grenade into their territory, and Granvik covered it with his body, thereby dying. Ed decided not to back down and find Nyland. After a while, she learned that Nyland didn't want to stop and give the capsules away because he understood their danger, but Ed didn't even want to listen to him. She shot him and went on to complete the task because she really wanted to see her daughter. After some time, Ed woke up and realized that she was at a military base. She immediately started looking for her daughter, but the doctor stopped her and told her that she was found in very bad condition. She was invited to the hall to be awarded a medal for valor and a medal for bravery. Lieutenant Nyland somehow appeared in the hall, but none of this interested Ed. She wanted to see her daughter as soon as possible. The commander told Ed that there was no daughter at this base and that all this was invented only so that Ed would have the motivation to bring the capsules to the base. Ed couldn't believe it, but after a while, she realized what she had done and went to the lieutenant in the ward to ask for help in destroying the virus. Nyland at first did not want to agree, but after a short persuasion, decided to help. With the help of one of the employees, they entered the laboratory. They had to kill the guards in order to get into the lab. Taking one of the scientists hostage, they were able to find the capsules. It turned out that it was impossible to blow up capsules in the laboratory because all people would get infected. So Ed and Nyland began to look for a way out. The scientists suggested that they could press the alarm button and then everyone would be evaluated. Ed and Nyland changed into scientists' clothes and tried to get out of the building, but Ed's stitches on the wound parted and she could no longer walk. Nyland helped her get to the hangar where all the people were evaluated. People flew away from this hangar in helicopters. Nyland left to find them seats in the helicopter. The guards approached Ed and realized that she had the capsules. Ed took out the capsules that were taped to the grenade and gestured to Nyland not to approach her and flew away. Ed trembled until the helicopters flew away and jumped off the roof of the building, detonating a grenade. 